So the following diagram might look familiar, and that is, of course, because this is our Cartesian plane. Cartesian plane in which we've added a few terms and a few things to, to describe some of, the, some of the different areas. So we'll see that we have actually used the different quadrants because, of course, our Cartesian plane is already divided into four parts as a result of our y-axis and our x-axis. And we've given those different quadrants numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. Then we've also named those quadrants in terms of our trigonometric function. So we'll see in the first quadrant, it says A for all. Uh, second quadrant, um, we're referring specifically to the function of sine. In our third quadrant, to the tangent function. And then in our fourth quadrant, to the cosine function. So what does this all mean? So firstly... The CAST is an acronym that we use for our CAST diagram. And the CAST standing, of course, for cosine, all, sine, and tangent. So that's just an easy way to remember our diagram. So let's think of this Cartesian plane that we've divided up into our quadrants in terms of the point O, which is the origin, and then in terms of having a circle superimposed on the diagram. Let's try and draw sort of round circle. So I'll just draw a quarter of the circle for now. And then think of this in terms of our circle starting from the positive x-axis where it will be zero degrees. Our positive y-axis where our circle will be the angle from our positive x-axis to y will be 90 degrees. The negative y-axis where it will be 180 degrees. 270 on our negative y-axis and then right back to the full circle 360. So imagine that there's a circle going all the way around and it has just been divided into four parts. Then we'll think of a point on the edge of the circle and a line connecting that point to our origin. So we'll call that line, let's call this point A and we'll call that line OA. So that is, of course, the radius of the circle. Now, the radius of the circle um, is a constant value all the way around. The circle is not going to, the, or the radius is not going to change of a circle because that is a point from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle. And our center point in this case is, of course, the origin on the Cartesian plane, the point 0 and 0, or the coordinates 0 and 0. So we know that R is always positive. Then let's write out our Sokotoa mnemonic so that we can have a reference to our trigonometric ratios. Sokotoa. All right, we have of course learned so far that the line that we draw from OA, or the line OA that we draw from the origin to the point A, is of course in order for us to be able to then join the, the point A to our x-axis so that we have a right-angled triangle. Then you should remember that we were then defining this in terms of our angle theta, which we drew from the positive x-axis to our line OA, and then we could define our sides of the triangle in terms of, in terms of the x and y axes. So our opposite side will be the value of y, and our adjacent side will be the value of x. So that then helps us to substitute in our Sokotoa mnemonic our different, the, the terms that we have defined our sides of the triangle as. So in the first quadrant, in quadrant one, the A where it says all says that we can use any of our trigonometric functions in terms of determining the size of theta. So think of this in terms of determining a positive value for the size of theta because we couldn't of course have um, have the size of theta to be negative 30 degrees that just wouldn't make any sense so we need to have we need to know which trigonometric functions we can use and that will then give us a positive value for the size of theta so in the first quadrant we can use any of our trigonometric ratios now that is because the y value will of course always be positive 
x value will always be positive and r is a constant positive value of course. So that says that we can use any of our functions um, in terms of determining the size of theta. Then next let's have a look at the sine of theta. So if we imagined a point on the edge of this quadrant of the circle, let's try and Okay, and then that is joined to the origin. Then we want to determine theta as this angle over here. So that line would then, of course, join down here to give us our right angle to the triangle. So in terms of the sine of theta, the sine of theta, which would, of course, be our opposite over our hypotenuse. So our opposite side is y. Our hypotenuse is r, and y and r in the second quadrant are positive. Because, of course, x in our second quadrant would give us a negative value down here. Right, so we know that we can use the sine function to give us a positive value for the sides of theta. Because a positive value divided by a positive value will, of course, give us a positive. Then in quadrant 3... It says that we are using the tangent of theta. So once again, we'll imagine a point on the circle in quadrant 3 joined to our origin. And there we'll have the tangent of theta. And the tangent of theta is, of course, the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite side, the opposite side in this case, just complete our right angle triangle. That would be the angle that we are looking for, theta. So our opposite side in this case would of course be y. And our adjacent side would be x. Now y in the third quadrant is always a negative value. Because y down here is negative. And x in the, th in the third quadrant is of course also negative. Now a negative value divided by a negative value will give you a positive value. So we know then that we will get a positive value for the size of angle theta. And then finally, in our fourth quadrant, where we have the cosine function, we can complete the circle. And we'll draw a point on the circle from the origin. Quickly just finish the right angle triangle. So our angle theta would then be from the positive x-axis to the line to the line that we joined from the edge of the circle to the origin. So that would be theta. So then the cosine of theta would be the adjacent side. So in this case, the opposite side is once again y. The adjacent side is x. A little bit difficult to draw that in there. And of course, R would be our hypotenuse as usual. So the adjacent side would then be X. Our hypotenuse would be R. And in the fourth quadrant, X is always positive. R is, of course, always positive, And that would give us a positive value for the size of angle theta. So remember that basically nothing is changing. All that we're doing is we, we're using a large circle that's divided into four quadrants. And then we can determine that in quadrant 2, the sine function will always give us a positive value for the size of theta. Quadrant 3, tangent, tangent will give us a positive value for the size of theta. And then in quadrant 4, the cosine of theta will give us a positive value for the size of theta.